Hello there, my name is Ismaus, and today we're going to be looking at how to create a car explosion in Blender 2.8. So this is what uh, I did here. Let me rewind it for a second. Play back. So this is what uh, we are going to be doing here. You can see the car deforms and then the fires. You see we have fire, smoke, and everything. Uh, the, even if you look at, if you look closely, uh, the, these door swings uh, the at the back boot is also uh, moving and just because of the the impact of the explosion yeah, so and, uh, let's look at this from this angle it's the same thing from a from a different angle have that tire there yeah so i think everything looks great and then the fire dissipates yeah so let's look at uh, the different settings I use and uh, everything. So uh, first of all, let's talk about the smoke itself. Uh, this, the Sorry, the fire itself is uh, being produced by this mesh here, which is a rigid body object that I rigged up to explode or move up in the air. And uh, it has a particle system uh, that is uh, being emitted via these, uh, vertex, from these vertex groups uh, that are selected here. Let's see, select because I didn't want the entire car to be engulfed in a fire because usually in in the real world not the entire the entire car doesn't catch fire it's just parts and parts of it uh, that are more uh, like yeah that catch fire so that's what I did with the vertex group and then use that vertex group as the vertex group density and I reduce the, the graffiti a bit. You can examine the entire project if you are a Patreon. You can request it from the Patreon page. I, if you also want to watch the entire process from start to finish, how I did the project, you can just go to my second channel, Blender Money. You will see the time lapse there. Uh, it's already up. So, yeah, basically that's it. Uh, you can see our explosion. We start off with a clean car. Let me just delete these. We start off with a clean car and then explodes. So to do that, instead of just right away beginning with a car being on fire, uh, we let me first dissolve this. I made the particle system uh, start at frame 40, and these particles are the source of the fire. And uh, the way you do that, make the particles the source of the fire, you just go to the physics tab, turn on fluid, and make sure the type is flow. Uh, flow type is fire and smoke, flow behavior is inflow, then uh, use under flow source, make sure you change uh, to the particle system you have set and uh, give it an initial velocity so that they have some uh, velocity, the fire has some velocity in the beginning and uh, that's it. So because these particles, these particles begin emitting at uh, 40, that's the same time when the fire starts uh, emit, being emitted. So See, frame 40 we get our first frames or flames like that and there you can see they're reacting they're following the car as you would expect them to in the same exact way you would expect them uh, to behave so it explodes the car deforms uh, the tire in a bus or something and uh, the fire continues so Thus, uh, the smoke emitter. Then we also have the domain. Uh, the domain settings are not that complicated. They're basically, uh, I use mostly the default settings. I change very few of the settings. And I, let me go through those settings a bit here. Again, you can just find the project on Patreon if you are Patreon and uh, examine these settings yourself. So the first settings I changed uh, is the time scale. So, so that the fire is not too rapid or it doesn't go up too much. And, uh, most of the settings here are basic are uh, the default settings so i also changed uh turned on dissolve so that the smoke dissolves faster i gave it a time frame of 100 and uh, also changed the fire a bit here because i didn't want the fire the frames to go too far or to rise too high so i reduced the reaction speed and uh, flame smoke and uh, vorticity i think for the fire that's it and then for the gas this gas he setting here uh, i found um affects the smoke more than uh, the fire so i reduced the buoyancy 
density and the heat density uh, which will which would reduce which would make the, the smoke not rise too high and the vorticity is basically just uh, turbulence for the smoke and i uh, think and also change uh, the end frame rate and uh, that was it i think for the domain settings then let me see what else what else what else was it yeah i think that's it for the for simulating the smoke now the other part is uh, the rigid body setting up the rigid body system so that uh, we get the car to deform because you, you don't expect the car to stay in the same shape as it was after the explosion you can see it's clean right around here then when the explosion starts you can see it deforming and i didn't use any shape keys so the way i set up that to work is that uh, i have these uh, these measures here which are basically are just uh, meshes with a subdivision surface and then a uh, displacement modifier to have them deformed deformed uh, like that and uh, then I give them a dynamic painting of type brush and uh, under source make sure I turn on paint I change the paint to mesh uh, plus proximity because I want them to be used to deform the car uh, in the displacement modifier for the car so I didn't want to touch this car itself because uh, it was going to be used for the rigid body so what I did is I created this proxy mesh uh, that uh, I gave a dynamic painting of type canvas so that when it collides with this mesh here uh, it uh, gets deformed so let me show you what's happening here if I just go into wireframe here and I go to weight paint here as well uh, you can see that uh, if I go to if I move this forward you can see that uh, we get this uh, uh, weight painting that is happening around uh, the surface here uh, so you can see on the surface of the car we get this weight paint as the car the mesh the proxy mesh approaches these uh, these uh, meshes 